Hello everyone, this is Harley from Garden FL and welcome to episode 9 of the Tropical Fruit Gardening TV series. In today's episode, we're actually going to be going over the Anonas. Now, I haven't actually showed you guys the Anonas and I've been harvesting a lot of them these past few weeks. So that is why I feel like I need to do a video just on... So this is the Nadai Vietnamese sugar apple. Now, these sugar apples, I actually just harvested one yesterday and... I kid you not, when I was eating it, it was so chewy. I've been keeping my eye on this one. I've been having a problem with these bags because the problem is, is you set some. Okay, this one came out really good. Now, you could tell when these are ready because in between the nodes of the sugar apple, the nodes are just like each of these bumps. Between the nodes, they start turning like a white color, like you see here. And for example, Oh, there's a ladybug on this one. As you see from like this sugar apple, the nodes are still green and in between them, you don't really see any color. They're just green to green. Well, as to this one, compared to this one, as you see, it's more plum and they're more like popping out. Well, that one's kind of more a uh, tight kind of a situation. This one, we'll, uh, we'll deal with that one later. So these sugar apples are actually in a pot and this one actually only has one fruit on it but as you can tell it's almost ready. Um, that's the pot in it. it's in, it's in a five gallon. As you see there's more over here and with these ones I've noticed that if you just have one fruit on them they tend to have a really big fruit such as this one. That one has a huge fruit on it. And I noticed over here that this one is very close to being ready to harvest. In fact, it's your harvest right now. And this is the purple sugar apple. I'll give you guys a good look at that one. So this is the purple sugar apple. As you see in the light, it appears kind of a pink, but uh, there you go. It's a very beautiful sugar apple, very attractive to the eye. And in the dark, it's a very dark kind of purple, deep purple. As you see, this is kind of how it looks when it's in the shade. This one has been shaded, so it, it was able to kind of color real nice. And uh, let's harvest that one now, because it's very plump and ready to be harvested. Uh, with the purple variety of sugar apple, you could tell when it's ready, because in between the nodes, instead of a uh, white, it becomes a kind of a pinkish color. As you see in between the nodes, it's kind of pinkish. So, yeah, and it, to the touch, it's very soft as well. So if you guys can't really tell when it's ready, just touch it and if it's soft. It's so this is the purple sugar apple that I'm about to harvest. The tree is fairly young. It's about uh, maybe two years old. It's from Thailand, a purple variety from Thailand. As you see, this is it. I already harvested one from here, but let's harvest this one. Let's see. Beautiful. As you see, here's a better look at the purple sugar apple. You can kind of see the difference between the coloration and the size. Very beautiful sugar apple. I really like this variety. Not only is it attractive to the eye, but when I ate the other one on the same tree, it appeared to be very chewy and a very good uh, seed to meat ratio. As you see here, it is on the ground to give you a better look. And actually, right above it <laughs> is the cherry lotta. So we're gonna kind of see the cherry lotta because the cherry lotta is also a red, because it's a hybrid, but it's a red anona. So I like red colored anona, and this is kind of a comparison. So on the right, we have the cherry lotta, and on the left, we have the purple sugar apple. As you see, the cherry lotta kind of doesn't really have deep red purple yet, or deep colored red, but it kind of has a little grayish, darkish, reddish. Compare it side to side. Obviously, this cherry lotta has a while to develop. And this one up here, as you see, there's another one. Uh, this tree, I actually heard that it's indestructible, meaning that um, it's really hard to kill this tree. And it's kind of true, it just keeps growing. So this tree is pretty huge. It's about a six and a half feet tall. 
it towers me. I'm six one, so <laughs> as you see, there's our stuff. It has two uh, cherry lattes growing. There's one of them. This one appears more kind of like uh, custard apple. It's very round and uniform. Uh, and this one kind of appears more like, uh, I don't know, it still looks cool, but you could tell right here it wasn't properly pollinated all the way, even though I hand pollinated them. I don't know, I like pollinating my known as like the round shape, but let's move more over here. Actually, we're gonna take that with us. Almost forgot that, but as you see, we're just, there's a known as everywhere in my yard. And this is what I had envisioned when I first started planting this. I said, I just want to walk out and just see sugar apple. This one's almost ready too. I said, I just want to walk out and just see sugar apple everywhere. <laughs> and in my front yard, actually, I have a huge anona tree, sugar apple. And this is actually the first uh, sugar apple tree I planted on my property. So it's a bit larger. And as you can tell, it just has, I, I think it has seven sugar apples. And so it just stands pretty tall. Here's another purple variety sugar apple I have, but it's not uh, in a big pot like that, like this one was. And also it's a bit smaller. It was just pollinated by nature. So that's why it kind of looks like that. It doesn't have a kind of a deep color like my other ones. Just to show you size comparison. So this is the one fruit we're going to be harvesting right here and um, it's pretty soft to the touch so let's harvest it. Oh we even see a ladybug on the top. So right here is an Adai Vietnamese sugar apple to the right, and on the left we have the Thai uh, purple sugar apple. The node structure on them is a little different. As you can tell, one more is a bit uh, compact together, and another one's a little more uh, kind of scaly. So I put this sugar apple in the fridge for a little bit, and I'm gonna eat it right now. So I just wanted to show you guys how it looked like before I eat it. So this is an Adai Vietnamese uh, variety. Now with this variety, you can actually peel it very easily. So I'll show you guys now. The skin, as you can see, you can just go like this. And it just peels off very uh, simply. Now this variety is known for being very chewy. And uh, not only chewy, but also uh, very easy to peel. As you see, it is also right Yeah, that was a very easy to peel, guys. So, that is our sugar apple. Peeled, ready to eat. And it's really cold right now, too, so mm, that's why I love to eat them. Nice and cold. So, this is the beginning of some lines I made. I planted some sugar apples, as you can see. There's some right here. These are the Dai Vietnamese. Right here, I actually have Rolinia. And this one is just doing great. It's loving the, the full sun it's getting and it's liking the, the soil too. As you can see here, more uh, sugar apples and I actually just pruned these back. So there's actually new growth coming, which I'm really excited. And new growth, this new growth will actually shoot out some flower shoots. So I can actually pollinate some and get some sugar apples in late December, I, I believe. And believe it or not, I actually pruned these a few days ago. So at this time of the year, it's really good to prune your nonas. And I'm actually gonna make a video about how to prune your nonas. There's a certain way how to prune it because you actually wanna take off some of the leaves after you prune a certain amount. And there's always a structure uh, that I recommend for the nonas to have in the future if you wanna build long-term good uh, for, you know, easy harvesting and stuff. So in between the lines too, what I'm doing is I'm planting beneficial crops. These are sugar loaf pineapples. I also have planted some things like castor bean 
and some Mexican sunflower. As you can tell right here, the Mexican sunflower is actually already coming, guys. Look, it's growing. It's so small. But this is super good for a chop and drop, guys. You want to grow this in between your crops, whether you're at your farm or garden. I grow this too in my garden. Now, I got this method from uh, Matt at Peace River Organics. And I also, uh, I got these from the Hart Brothers. So thank you to the Hart Brothers for giving me those. As you can see, I planted them in between my anonas. So let's go over here. And over here, you can see I have some species. This is a dwarf Malaysian papaya. Now it's really hot outside, so that's why it's kind of looking sad. And here's another sugar apple. Sugar apple. sugar apple if you guys are wondering how close i'm putting them uh this is a high density unknown farm so that's why they're they stand about six to seven feet apart so i just use my feet to measure it as you can see there's um flowers on this anona plant and look guys they're, they're all coming so i'm actually gonna get fruit here but to be honest i'm gonna wait maybe i'm only gonna look like one fruit on these plants because i really want to let them grow out as you can see back here we have another sugar apple now as you could tell it's pretty shaded these guys are by these trees up here so I'm actually gonna take out a couple of these trees in the middle the thinner ones but the main kind of bigger ones are gonna stay and I'm gonna kind of provide some sort of um, shade for these trees while they're young because the sun in Florida is, is brutal. There I have more sugar loaf pineapples. So this is kind of the start of the uh, of the Anona Rose, as you could tell. I'm not sure how far this is gonna go back uh, because this goes all the way back. I have so much room to play with. I have all of this space, but this is just a, a small kind of space I'm working with because the source of water is right over there. And I don't wanna kind of I like high density gardening and sugar apples respond very well to pruning and the fruit can get very big in a, in a tight space if you prune them correctly from the start. So that's what I'm kind of starting from now from when they're young. Back here I have a coconut and then here we have a hog plum. Now these hog plums are just beautiful growing. You could tell like that. Yeah, I really like that one. Right over here we have a purple sugar apple. It's beautiful. Here we have a June plum. It, it appears a bit shaded right now, but I actually, uh, I'm gonna trim some of these and allow more sunlight in once I have the proper tools. It's just, I don't have the tools right now to trim that. The, the branches are too thick. <laughs> but actually, right there at the base, I have a passion fruit growing, and uh, it was a bit eaten at my house, but it's actually responding very well, and I already see new growth on the shoots. Now, it's gonna love binding up the the branches on these so i'm gonna leave some of them so i can do that and i'm gonna also try to get my hands on the, the big passion fruit so i can find a tree on here and let it go crazy and talking about the giant one right here as you can tell i have some guavas uh these are now at my house i've i've grown guavas in part shade to part sun and they actually eat fruit very well so that's why i'm allowing these to get in some, some shade for now because i'm sure they'll they'll grow right here we have a star apple comedo. This is actually the green variety. And these just have beautiful leaves growing. You can tell the new growth is already coming on this one. And same thing, I'm planting in some shade for now, but as it grows up, we're gonna trim the top to allow more sunlight. And eventually it's gonna take over. I'm gonna allow this tree to kind of grow huge because it has, you know, uh, great fruit. Right here I have jackfruit species. I'm not sure of the the jackfruit variety, but I just know they're different varieties and they're already coming out with new growth varieties after I planted them. So I'm so excited to have these jackfruits here. I'm also gonna let these grow very big and kind of fruit. As you can tell, this is actually another pathway right here in the middle. And uh, that's where the jackfruit was. And here where the other one is. And they're spaced very well. So that'll be good. Right here I have Katuk. And this is actually a dwarf Thai mulberry. And as you can see, it already has a lot of new growth coming. So I'm super happy because I pruned it back up fairly hard after I planted it. So uh, I'm glad that it's, it's liking the soil that it's planted in and um, it's responding very well. Now, one of the reasons I really like this property and I bought it was because I noticed that the oaks all have been dropping their leaves for a while. And this property was kind of neglected. No one was using it. So it was obviously all the leaves were just falling and uh, mulching. 
So this is really good and beneficial for fruit trees and long-term trees. So that's why I'm gonna keep uh, some of the hanging trees so they can keep doing that. And eventually these trees will replace them. And um, I'm gonna bring in mulch too, to cover them and make them really thick too. About six to eight uh, inches deep, a uh, higher meaning, maybe even more to be honest. So let's just move over here. Here I have another star apple. This is a purple star apple, purple Camito. Um, so I'm really excited for this. To the right I have a guava, a Thai guava, Thai guava. Now these guavas are actually really good to place in between your bigger trees. So um, it's gonna produce fairly early on I believe too. So I can't wait for that one. To the right I have another big tree. This is a, uh, a, a, a sour tamarind tree. And uh, this tamarind tree is already growing very well. It's liking the soil. Now this tree actually gets very huge too. So uh, it's uh, about uh, eight feet apart from the star apple, which is gonna be another fairly big tree. And then to the right of it is a hog plum, which I can keep fairly pruned down, kind of keep a nice canopy. And also uh, this is gonna fruit abundantly. So I can't wait for that hog plum. As you see, this is kind of another natural path. Here I have another hog plum. And I have a red, yellow, and I believe purple variety. This is Moringa right here. And all this area is gonna be trimmed back. I'm actually gonna plant like long guns all across. So the long guns are gonna kinda of be a block and then on the other side, I'm gonna plant coconut to kinda, of, you know, be a barrier. So it's gonna look really good in the future. And over there are gonna be lines of PVC, uh, Pet Pak Chong at Demoya. And I'm gonna give them a nice space so they can really grow in full sun. So it'll be really good to see. But as you see right here, I have another star apple. Over there, I have a hog plum, a hog plum and then a guava. But this is kind of, I just wanna show you guys the entrance, what the entrance is gonna be. As you see, there's a coconut. I'm thinking about moving that stuff, but this is gonna be the entrance so far. You see, you're gonna be able to drive in. And uh, this area, this is where I'm just keeping most of my uh, plants right now. I have so many other plants to bring from my house, but the thing is I just don't have the space in my car to bring everything. So I have to get that all sorted out for now. But you can tell that there is my farm for now. It's definitely gonna be coming along. 